Good morning and welcome. It's so good to have you. We are the Holgate Street Church of Christ. Welcome to our virtual service this morning. We're going to worship God and we're so thankful that you have decided to join us. The call to worship this morning will be from Psalms 96, the first four verses. And it reads, O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Amen. Let's pray. Father, there is no God but you. You are our Lord. You are our Savior. You alone are worthy of all praise. You alone are worthy of our worship. All other gods are idols, but you are our Father. Bless our time together. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. From your mind. All right, you worshipers. All worship. It's time to forget about all the trouble the devil's brought in our life. Give it over to God. Yeah. I want you to know right now it's his time. Listen. We gotta give him praise. Let everybody worship. Come on, the Lord. Let's worship. worship. Oh, come on, saints, he's worthy. Right, yeah. Everything, everything, all the pain, 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 Worthy of the glory, giving the praise, yeah. Oh, together we can, yes, we can. Oh, worship the Lord. I don't know about you, but it has shown up good to me. So when your troubles come, just hold on, God's unchanging hands. You might have brought some trials. You might have brought some tribulations here this morning. You might be feeling a little weary, but I came to tell you. Yes, I learning, learning to lead. Yes, I'm learning to lead. Yes, I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Every day I'm finding more power. More power. Yes, I'm learning, learning, learning to, to lean on Jesus. on Jesus. Yes, I'm learning, learning, learning to, to lean. lean. Yes, I'm learning, learning to lean. Every day I'm learning, learning to lean. To lean. Say broken. 
been haunted at an altar, at an altar I knelt. I found peace, peace. so serene. I know, I know that he asks us oh, yes, if a child, a child like trust and a heart. Oh, that's pure, oh, that's pure, pure, pure and clean. Yes, I need to eat every day. I Sickness when I'm alone and in despair, I call on Jesus, and He's always there. Oh, yes, He is. You know, He'll, he'll never leave me, never He away. won't forsake me. He'll be there, He'll be there, He'll be there. Anytime, oh, anywhere, yes, I'm learning to lean, learning to lean, oh, you know I'm learning to We now have the opportunity to commune around the Lord's table and remember the gift of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I would like to read from John, the third chapter, beginning in the 16th verse, and it reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Let's pray. Father, we're so thankful for the love that you have for us, for the gifts that you have given us. We're so thankful for the gift of Christ. We're so thankful for his sacrifice. Father, for all that he did that we might be saved. Father, we thank you for this bread that reminds us of his body as it hung on the cross for us. Father, we thank you for this fruit of the vine because it reminds us of the blood that was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. Father, as we partake of this emblem, we ask that you would help us to remember Jesus and all that he went through for our sake. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Oh, it was a blood. I know. I know. 
Another part of our worship is giving back to God what, from what He has so richly blessed us with. I would like to read a few verses from 2 Corinthians 9, chapter, beginning in the 6th verse. And it reads, But I say this, He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he is purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Let's pray. Father, we're so thankful for the many blessings that you've given to us, have entrusted us with. Father, we want to be the kind of givers that you would have us to be. We want to be cheerful givers. Father, we ask that you bless us and that you would help us as we work on our giving. Father, we ask that you bless the offering this morning, that you would bless our use of it. Father, we thank you so much for all that you have done for us, and we want to be the kind of giver that you are. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. There are three ways that you can give this morning. The first way is through our website. You can go to wholegatecfc.com, hit the Donate tab, and enter your information there. The second way is through the Zelle app, where you can go to treasurer at wholegatecfc.com, and you can make your offering there. The third way is the P.O. box, where you can mail your check to Holgate Street Church of Christ, Box 18226, Seattle, Washington, 98118. Thank you, and may God continue to bless you. Hallelujah. How many can testify this morning that the Lord is worthy Hallelujah. of all the praise, the glory, and the honor? Gave his life on Calvary for a sinner like you and me. So we ought to just give God the highest praise just to tell him thank you. Y'all want to help me this morning? Won't you help me sing? Hallelujah. Come on, help me sing, yeah, yeah. No, he's worthy of praise, glory, and honor. I'm gonna give him the highest praise for all of my days. Y'all don't mind, just let me tell you a few reasons why we should praise him. Come on. See, it's God that woke us all up the morning. Yeah, clothes on the back. Food on the table, food on the table. That's why we ought to give him the highest praise. That ain't all he done, all he done. Took nails in his hands, nails in his feet for a sinner like you and me. That's why we ought to praise him endlessly. Y'all, we didn't deserve it, no. Come on, we ought to give him all on praise. And y'all come on and help me sing this song right here. I said, let the spirit, let it ride. Come on, let the spirit, let it ride. Let the praises of our king, he's our king. Well, I'm gonna, and you wanna, we got to I'm gonna let it ride. Let the glory of the Lord sing. Let the glory of the Lord. You ought to let it ride. The Lord has been good to you. You gotta let it ride. Somebody say it. The praises go up, the blessings come pouring down. So we gotta let it ride. Lift your voice and sing. Sing this song right here. Come on. Tell them. I said, Lord, the people praise Lord, you. Say, Lord, the people 
fame. You know he lift you up and raise you, Lord. You up and hey, Lord, you are the Holy One. Yes, yeah, you are, Lord. You're the one. You're the only one. You're the one. Come on. I said, Lord, the people love you. Yeah. Love. And we place nobody above you, Lord. Lord, because you are the Holy One. Hey, Lord, said you're the one, you're the only one. Come on, everybody sing Holy, Holy, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the glory is to you, Lord. Yeah. Oh, Lord, you are. Hey, you're the one, you're the only one. You're the one, you're the only one. I said, if I had ten thousand tongues, if I had ten thousand tongues, I would bless you with everyone. Oh, Lord, you are the holy one. Oh, Lord, I said, you're the one, you're the only one. And say if I had ten thousand hands, if I had ten thousand oh, hands, I would bless you as you come and like say, Oh you Lord, Lord cause you are the Holy One. You are oh, the Holy One. I said you're the one, you're the only one. Lord, Lift those Lord, hands, Lord, let me hear you say Holy, Holy, Hallelujah. Oh Lord, I said all the glory is due. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us again for this online uh, worship time. And uh, as we uh, now approach the time in which uh, we share a message from God's Word, I want to thank those of you that have been with us uh, throughout this entire year and those of you that have shared this uh, broadcast with others. Uh, I want to uh, uh, thank you for that. And uh, we look forward to the coming year where we are still going to remain online, even though we are worshiping in person. Thank you for uh, uh, you as our virtual audience. Well, today is the last Lord's Day of 2021. Uh, we are uh, preparing to enter into a brand new year. Now, I realize that um, in one sense, it's, it's turning the page on a calendar, but I like the concept of the new year uh, and I like to think of it more than just that because it gives us an opportunity uh, to rethink and reflect on the past and uh, really look forward to uh, some great things in the future. Uh, of course, this past year has been uh, filled with many challenges. We're still uh, facing uh, living with um, the pandemic. Um, you know, there's financial issues going on, other health-related issues, family issues. Uh, it's called life. But we want to just pause for a moment to think about how uh, this coming year um, we can be closer to God, closer um, to our family members, and that our, that our lives are just um, uh, better and we can seek to improve and grow closer to God and experience a more fulfilling life. So that's really what today is all about. And so what I want to do is I want to uh, talk about 
uh, this story that's found in the first chapter of the book of Joshua. Here we find uh, God is speaking uh, to Joshua and the people of God are uh, preparing to enter into the promised land. And so I want to read that text, Joshua 1 uh, verses uh, 1 through 9. And then I want to uh, guide your thoughts and, and hopefully say some things that, that are going to be encouraging and inspiring to you. So Joshua chapter 1, uh, beginning at verse 1. The Bible says that after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all of these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land that I'm about to give them to the Israelites. He says, I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Verse 7. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do all the law that my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Now here at this point in time in history, the people of Israel are at the edge of the Jordan River. Uh, God has, has led them there. They have been wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. And of course, it was God's intent when they originally left Egypt under the leadership of Moses to lead them into the promised land. But because of their lack of faith, uh, they had to wander in the wilderness 40 years later. So here they are ready. Moses uh, is now gone. Uh, Joshua is now the new leader of God's people. And so um, God speaks to Joshua. And what I want to mention here, and I want to talk about uh, this text both today and next Lord's Day as well. So this is a two-part message that I want to talk about four instructions that God gives to Joshua. And then I want to mention next time uh, five promises that God makes to Joshua. So there are four instructions I want to talk about. Uh, and then five promises that he makes. Now, uh, before we discuss these four instructions today, what I want us to do is to talk about our personal transition when it comes to this new year. Uh, again, uh, today's the final day of 2021. Next Lord's Day uh, will be in a brand new year, 2022. And so I want us to think about that and to uh, be encouraged and be inspired as we make this transition. Now, in one sense, we're, we're like Israel. Israel was, was leaving some things behind. Uh, they had their future, their entire future ahead of them. They had uh, the promised land. It was an opportunity for a new life, opportunity for, for, for new challenges, and so that's, that's what I want us to think about today. And when I think about our lives, 
I like to, to focus on uh, five key areas of our lives. Let me mention those. The first is our, is our spiritual life. Uh, that has to do with our relationship with God. That, that is to be the number one priority in our lives. How do we serve God? Because not only does it involve our lives as we're living here now, but uh, our spiritual lives will engage us throughout eternity. Uh, this life is only temporary. And so the first area of our, of our lives has to do with our spiritual lives, our relationship to God. Uh, the second area has to do with our personal health. And, of course, as, as I continue to grow older and uh, my body continues to decline, uh, I become more aware of, of the importance of, of my health. Those of you that are younger, most of you, you know, you can kind of eat anything, do anything, and you're healthy because the body is at that stage of life. But, but as you grow older in particular, uh, that, that all of us experience, we all experience health challenges. And so that's a second area uh, of your life. And if you don't have your health, you know, it doesn't, doesn't matter what else is going on in your life. If you don't have your personal health, both your your mental health, and most of the time we think about health from the physical standpoint, but, but health involves our mental health as well. So our mental health, our spiritual health, that's an important area of our lives. So first of all, our spiritual lives. Secondly, our health. And then the third area is the area of our relationships. Uh, life is about relationships. Our relationship to God, our relationship with each other. And it doesn't matter uh, uh, who you are. You have relationships, uh, be it with your uh, immediate family, uh, be it friends, be it co-workers, be it neighbors. We all have relationships, and so that's a, that's a major area of our lives. And then fourth, the fourth key area has to do with our finances. Um, uh, our money, our income, you know, paying the bills, paying taxes, um, and also includes the uh, property that we, that we manage uh, and own. You know, um, uh, if you have a house, um, you know, just looking at, looking at uh, my mother's house today, this afternoon, I uh, went by there. There's moss growing on the roof. And so, you know, things like that. You, you know, you've got to take care of those uh, material things, finances. That's a whole major area of life. And then the final area uh, is our work life, our work life. Uh, those of you that, that still uh, have a job, you know, there's been a lot of changes over the last two years, perhaps, depending on what you do in terms of how you're doing that job. Uh, many people are working at home, either full-time, part-time now because of the pandemic. Um, and if you're, if you're retired, uh, you don't stop working. Uh, so a lot of people think, well, once I retire, I'm stop working. No, you shouldn't stop working. It's just that your work changes when you retire. So, so that may be an area that you want to think about. So, so those five areas, your spiritual life, your health, your relationships, your finances, and your work life. So what I want to do is, is I'd like for you to, to choose one of those five areas as your, uh, your, your new land, so to speak. So, so just as the people of Israel were entering into this new land, the promised land, I'd like for you to think about one of those five areas in terms of, of your transition. As you transition, uh, passing and putting behind one year and you enter into a new year, I want you to think about one of these areas um, um, because what I want to do is to I want to look at these instructions and these promises that God gives to Joshua and we're going to apply some of the principles there in terms of that land. So the, so the first thing I want you to do is to, to identify one of these five areas, your spiritual life, uh, your health, your relationships, your finances, or your work life. I, I want to, to, to focus on this one. And of course, some of you may think, well, I want to, I want to, I want to, Think about all of them. That's okay, uh, but let's at least start with one. So I want you to think about your life in the coming year within the context of that one area. So, so choose now, and then we'll, we'll continue with this message. So let's look then at these four instructions as the Lord speaks to Joshua, these four instructions that he gives him uh, as they are preparing to go into the promised land. So first of all, uh, God tells Joshua uh, to get ready. He says, get ready. He reminds him and, and just makes the affirmation. Of course, Joshua knew that. Uh, he reminds him that Moses is now dead. Uh, over this past year, there have been uh, many people who, who are no longer with us. 
And part of, part of um, grieving and mourning and adjusting to a person's life is just simply coming to that reality. You know, when a person dies in our life, um, there's sort of a, a, a denial or shock that we experience. We just can't believe this person is gone. And so God, God here is getting Joshua to come to that reality. Moses is now dead. You are now the leader of God's people. And so what he tells them, he tells Joshua, he says, Now I want you and the people, both you and the people, he says to get ready. Get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land that I'm about to give them to the Israelites. It's verse 2. So, so God tells Joshua to get ready. And, and he says, not only are you to get ready, but the people are to get ready. And as leaders, um, if, if we're not ready for the future, our, our people will not be ready. We have to lead by example. We have to lead by faith and, and in faith and through faith and having confidence. And we have to lead through love, that we get ready and in love, the people that we're leading, that we love them and we want the best for them, then we're in a position to lead. So, so God tells Joshua, you need to get ready. I'm, I'm going I'm to lead the people into the promised land. I'm going I'm to take them there. You need to be prepared. You need to get ready. Now, whenever we do something, anything, um, we, we get ready for it. Uh, we just spent uh, the last three weeks uh, studying and discussing uh, the one journey that all of us will take for which we need to prepare, and that's the journey of death. And so we talked about uh, the fact that, that we need to get ready for that, both in terms of, of, of our own lives, but also in, uh, for the benefit of those we leave behind, our family and friends. And so we talked about getting ready, getting prepared, you know, some things we need to do as we anticipate going through this journey. And so God tells Joshua, you need to get ready. The people need to get ready. The second thing that uh, uh, God tells Joshua in terms of instructions, and again, we could combine these. Uh, we could number them in various ways. But he tells Joshua to be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. In verse 6, God says, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land that I swear to their ancestors to give. Verse 7 says, Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant gave you. Do not turn uh, to, uh, from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Verse 9, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So here we have uh, three times, three times that God is telling Joshua, you need to be strong, you need to be courageous. Now, this idea of being strong, uh, we think of, uh, of course, of physical strength. And, and of course, Joshua uh, was a warrior. He was a, a military leader. But, but not only that, I think here uh, it's, it's speaking probably more of emotional strength. That when we are making transitions, when we are pursuing goals, when we are uh, uh, imagining the future, that takes emotional strength. And so God tells him to, to be strong. It means that you need to be uh, strong enough and, and willing to break through barriers. Because anytime you set a goal, anytime you're, you're, you're trying to progress in an area, there's gonna be some obstacles, there's gonna be some barriers there, and so you need the strength to break through those barriers. In addition, the idea of, of, of being strong means that you're convicted. Uh, a lot of times we set a goal, and again, related to the fact that, that we get tired and, and strength also relates to being able to endure. Um, uh, a lot of times we get tired, we get discouraged, and so we have to have a conviction and a firmness that's going to carry us through to whatever the goal is. And so this idea of strength, 
has to do again with the emotional stream. Uh, having the ability to prevail, any, any, you know, you watch, you watch athletes in particular, athletes who, who, who are running a race or who are playing a game, um, you see that they have not only this physical strength to perform the task, but they have the mental strength to endure. Uh, I think of marathon runners, um, you know, who, who run the 26 or so miles. And that's a mental task. Not only are they preparing themselves when they train physically, but, but they have to prepare themselves mentally. And so when it comes to going into this promised land, as God is telling Joshua, that you need to be prepared mentally. You need to be strong so that you can prevail. And then I think related to this as well is uh, for Joshua in particular as a leader, uh, there's going to be this, this heavy burden on his shoulders. It's part of the burden of leadership. Because if you remember, Joshua has been with the people for this 40 years, and he has observed Moses and the weight that Moses bore as a leader uh, to the people of Israel. And Israel was... Uh, it was not an easy group to lead. Why? Because even though God blessed them, God guided them, God protected them, uh, they complained, uh, they lost faith, uh, they wanted to go back to Egypt. And so this was a difficult and challenging group to lead. And so uh, uh, Joshua was going to need strength and courage because of the heavy burden that he was going to bear in terms of leading the people. And then we need strength and we need courage to fight through discouragement. Uh, anytime you set a goal, there's going to be feelings of discouragement, feeling, feeling like, you know, um, like I'm wanting, wanting to give up, throw in the towel, uh, quit. And so we all need strength in order to continue to progress in that sense. So, so God tells Joshua two things. He says, he says you get ready. I'm going to... I'm going to lead you to this land. You need to be prepared. You need to be ready for that. Secondly, he says, you need to be strong and courageous. Also, related to this, uh, the third instruction that God gives to Joshua, he says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. In verse 9, God says, have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? He says, do not be afraid. Now, what is it that, that Joshua had to be afraid of? Well, uh, if you recall, uh, first of all, there were people in that land. That land was not empty. It was occupied. And Joshua had been there when the people were previously paralyzed by their fear, which then led them to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. Let me remind you of that story. It's recorded in Numbers chapter 13. And when the people come out of Egypt under Moses' leadership, God instructs Moses to select 12 men, one from each of the 12 tribes of Israel. He said to, to uh, select 12 men, and uh, he said to send them into the land of Canaan to explore it. This is found, in, again, in the book of Numbers chapter 13. Now, God had said, I'm, I'm already given you this land. And so it's sort of like if, if we're going to move to a new area. Uh, typically, uh, you know, if you're married, you have kids, typically, you know, the father will go fly to the area and, you know, find out what it's like. Check out the neighborhoods, uh, check out the school systems, the kids in school, you know, the parks and, you know, how far from downtown are you and, and the stores and so forth. Uh, whenever you're moving to a new area, you go and check it out. So in this instance, God told Moses to, to choose 12 men to go into the area to check it out because I'm giving it to them. And so that's what Moses did. And so the, um, uh, the 12 men went into that land and they stayed there for 40 days, 40 days uh, worth of surveillance and they came back and returned and gave a report to both Moses, Aaron, uh, and then all the people as well. And uh, here's what the Bible says. Let me pick up the reading in verse 26. This is Numbers 13, 26. It says, They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. 
And there they reported to them, to the whole assembly, and showed them the fruit of the land. Uh, it was harvest time. They even brought back a, you know, a huge cluster of grapes to show how fruitful the land was. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land in which you sent us. It does flow with milk and honey. And here is the fruit. Verse 28 is where things change. They say, but the people who live there, again, the land is occupied. The people who live there, they said, they're powerful. And the cities are fortified and they're very large. And we even saw descendants of Anak there. And uh, uh, then, then, then Caleb uh, it says that he silenced the people before Moses because there was a murmuring among the people. And you can see that the, the spies were giving this positive report, but, but then the report changes to a negative report. And of course, Caleb, who's one of the, one of the two men that, uh, uh, that went there, it says that he silenced the people. And he said, we should go up and take possession of the land, for we certainly can do it. We can do it. But the men who had gone up with him says, we can't. We can't. We can't attack those people. They're stronger than we are. And so the Bible says they spread a bad report among Israel about this. Well, the, the, the story continues in the next chapter, in, in chapter 14. And the Bible says that that night, all the members of the community, they raised their voices and they wept aloud. And all of the Israelites grumbled against Moses and against Aaron. And here's what the whole assembly said. They said, if we had died in Egypt, if we'd only died in Egypt or even in this wilderness, they say, why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to fall by the sword? They say, our wives and our children will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And then they said, let's choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Now, <laughs> uh, we, we kind of think... Wow, um, that's pretty, pretty bad, pretty bad. Because you just come out of Egypt, out of this oppressive bondage on the Pharaoh. God leads you miraculously through the leadership of Moses, through God's power. And then you're saying, let's go back there. So Moses uh, is very frustrated at this point. And the Bible says that, uh, uh, that he falls, he and Aaron fall face down, that... Uh, uh, Joshua is very frustrated. He tears his clothes. Joshua is one of the two that go as well. And here's, here's what was said to the people. He said, the land that we pass through is, and explored is exceedingly good. And if the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us to that land, the land flowing with milk and honey, and he will give it to us. Now notice what, what he says here. He says, verse 9, he says, Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not be afraid of the people of the land. He says, we can devour them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. So, so here we see then, it's almost like a replay. Here, God, God, when they came out of Egypt, he was willing to lead them to the promised land. But because of the fear of the people, they did not go in at that time. And so here now, 40 years later, edge of the Jordan River, ready to enter the promised land. Joshua remembers the fear. And so God says, do not be afraid. So here we have then uh, uh, three of these promises. God tells Joshua to get ready. He tells him to be strong and courageous. Thirdly, he tells him to, to not be afraid. And then fourth and finally, uh, God tells Joshua to obey his word, to obey his word. Here we see um, uh, the word of God. And he tells him uh, here, if you look in... Um, Going back to Joshua chapter 1, if you look in verse 8 
Um, uh, the Bible says, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate it on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything that is written in it. God says you need to obey my word. You need to keep it on your lips. That is, you need to read it and that could be recited. You need to meditate on it. It needs to be on your mind and on your heart at all times. So that what? So that you can obey it. And he says, when you do that, you will succeed. You will be prosperous. You will be blessed. And so here we find then these, um, these four instructions. So, so this morning, I, I want you to do just one thing. I want you to, to think about this transition of, uh, of the years and entering into a new year as being entering into a new area of your life. One of these five areas, be it your spiritual life, your health, your, your relationships, your finances, or your work life. I want you to choose one area to focus on. And what we'll do is we'll relate these instructions, these things that God had told, told Joshua to, uh, to get ready, to uh, be strong and courageous, to not be afraid, to obey the word of God. We'll see how those will apply uh, to that decision. So we'll continue this uh, next Lord's Day. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for uh, your word. And we thank you for these stories of Joshua and Moses and the people of Israel that we can uh, better understand you and, and your presence in, in our lives and your power that you exercise and the hopes uh, that you have and, and the great future that you have. And we pray that we can make some decisions uh, uh, this week and next week that will carry us throughout this new year. We thank you for opening that door for us. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks again for joining us this morning. I want to remind you that uh, as we do every Lord's Day at 1215, we have our Kids Talk. And Kids Talk is an online, live, virtual Bible study. And you can... Um, Tune in by going to the website and clicking on the link to Kids Talk. It's at 1215 today. And then uh, at uh, 5 o'clock, we have our live virtual time of prayer and encouragement. Again, go to the website at holgatecoc.com. Click on the link to the time of prayer and encouragement and join us. You don't have to be a member to be a part of that. And it's a great time for us. And then, of course, if you are in our area, uh, in the Seattle area, we are meeting in person at 2600 South Holgate Street. We'd like to invite you to come and worship with us. We meet at 10 o'clock. We're usually done by around 11.15 or so. And if you have questions uh, about our ministry, about the gospel of Christ, you're interested in becoming a Christian, being baptized, or if you desire a personal Bible study, we'll make that available to you. Please uh, uh, write us and email us at contact us at holgatecoc.com. Thank you and have a great week. Yeah.